Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. Now, take a minute and wonder how an air conditioner gives us cool air. Not just that, but it also filters the air so that the harmful particles, dust and other contaminants are not inhaled by us. Similarly, a pneumatic system requires filtered air for proper functioning. The air should be clean and dry such that the system does not wear beforehand. Air is primarily used in pneumatic applications because of its easy availability and safety. But air as available naturally varies in its composition because of various parameters like moisture content. For this reason, the air has to be treated in various stages. There are mainly three stages of air treatment. This starts with the removal of harmful particles that could damage the compressor. Then, the air is dried to reduce the humidity which comes under the primary air treatment. Finally, the lubricant is added to the air in the secondary air treatment. Let's discuss these stages one by one. First of all, the air to be used in the system needs to be pressurized. To pressurize the air, compressors are used. But the compressors are delicate machinery and any foreign contaminant can severely damage the compressors. Thus, the filters are used to remove dust and smoke particles from the air. Filters are classified into two major types, namely dry and wet filters. Dry filters which are generally seen in cars have cartridges while the wet filters have an oil bath which is used to pass the air followed by a wire mesh filter. As air passes through the oil, the dirt particles are attached to the oil and subsequently removed by the wire mesh filter. Another classification of the filters is done according to the size of particles that they can filter. The size of the particles is measured in microns or micrometers. Filters with a nominal rating will block 98% of the particles while a filter with absolute rating will block 100% of the particles of the specified size. Lastly, microfilters with removable cartridges can block 99.9% .9 of the particles of size as small as 0.01 micrometers. After the air is filtered, it is sent for drying so that it can have a low moisture content and the system cannot rust over time. For this, dryers are used. Dryers remove moisture from the air via different processes according to which they are classified. The most simple type consists of an air filter and a water trap. The working of such dryers is also simple. The air at the inlet changes in direction suddenly due to the shape. Additionally, the deflector cone also swirls the air which causes the water in the air to be thrown outwards at the walls of the separator and get collected in a trap bottom. The bottom has a drainage from where the condensed moisture can be easily drained out. As we know, on cooling air, water condenses and the moisture content decreases. This same principle is used in a refrigerated dryer. A refrigerated dryer cools the air to just above 0 degrees Celsius, which causes almost all the water to condense and get collected in a separator. To increase the efficiency of these systems, the cool air leaving the system can be used in a heat exchanger to cool the incoming air, thus the pre-cooled air condenses easily, increasing the overall efficiency. But some systems require absolutely dry air which can be obtained by using chemical dryers. Chemical dryers remove the moisture by two processes, namely absorption and adsorption. In the first process, by using a deliquescent dryer, the water vapor is slowly dissolved into a liquid by the chemical agent called a desiccant. This condensed liquid is then drained from the bottom. These types of dryers are called absorption dryers and since they use a chemical that is used up in the process, they need to be replaced in regular intervals. This problem of replacement is overcome by using adsorption dryers. These types of dryers use a granular material such as silicon dioxide which collects the moisture, essentially adsorbing it on the sharp edges. This moisture can be released back by simply heating the material. By using two columns of such filters, 
Continuous filtration can be achieved where one column filters the moisture from the incoming air while the other column is heated to release the adsorbed air. Due to this property of reusability, adsorption dryers are also called regenerative dryers. Thus, the primary air treatment is completed. But sometimes the pneumatic system might require lubrication for proper working. Adding oil too early in the system results in the formation of emulsions. Thus, oil is added at the end, that is in secondary air treatment. The oil is added by a fine mist to dry and clean air in a lubricator. The lubricator works in similar to the principle of petrol air mixing in a car's carburetor. As the air enters the lubricator, a venturi ring causes the velocity to increase. Due to this, a pressure reduction is observed which causes the oil to be drawn up via a riser tube which finally comes out as a spray and mixes with the air. Here, the oil flow rate can be adjusted by a needle valve. Moreover, the larger oil particles in the air-oil mixture are removed as the air swirls around the central cylinder. Finally, clean and lubricated air with low moisture content is obtained at the outlet to be used in the system. This is how a typical air treatment process is carried out in a pneumatic circuit. Well, that's all for this video. We'll be back with more interesting content. So stay tuned and until next time, bye.